Okay, we're taking a look at uh, Shiloh, Grant Surprised, part of Decision Games' Folio Game series, and it was published in 2010. Looking through the rules here, I don't see a designer credited, but they claim it's part of their Musket and Sabre standard rules. And uh, that's the game we're going to take a look at today. Now, as I've mentioned in other videos, I haven't bought a lot of the decision games because um, most of the decision games in the magazine I always felt were unfinished products. But I've got a little story about this particular game. I picked it up at WBC uh, last year or the year before. Decision Games often has a booth uh, in a critical corridor at WBC and they used to pass by their booth all the time. And This game was on one of those metal twirl racks and it seemed to just call out to me. I am interested in the Civil War a lot. So I said, oh, let's pick it up. Maybe a folio game will be more polished than their magazine games. And much to my surprise, it is. Now this game is virtually like the old quad game series, those old SPI quads, except it's what I'm going to call a new and improved system. The rules are your old standard, you know, rigid hex zones of control kind of system, but they've added some nice new features, and um, I find that that's what makes the game kind of interesting compared to the uh, quad games. But for all intents and purposes, it's like the quad games. Now the folio series, this is the larger folio series, so this is the size of more or less an 8x10 magazine, not those little wee wee folio games. The map is pretty nice, it's got some nice graphics, and uh, we'll take a look at the map and I'll show you some of the counters, tell you a little bit about what the game is all about. Now Shiloh is an interesting battle to um, explore because it's unlike other Civil War battles. The main difference is this that the Confederates came on in a very unusual formation. They were kind of one core behind each other. And in no other Civil War did they use that formation. And I've tried to find out in books why they did so, and most of the authors shy away from the subject, but a couple of the astute authors give the reasons for it. The morning of April 6th, the Union Army under Grant was sort of encamped around Pittsburgh Landing, as we all know in a kind of a will I nil I fashion. They were not entrenched because they were not expecting a Confederate attack from the direction of Corinth. Their right flank was protected by this creek here, Lick Creek, Snake Creek, and of course the Tennessee River. And the reason the Confederates came on in this unusual formation, apparently given um, by General Beauregard, was because they couldn't really do a linear formation. There just wasn't enough room to deploy all the men. So they came on one corps behind another. And this is what caused the battle, eventual battle, to be so disjointed. And with all these units, 1st, 2nd, 3rd Corps, all mixed in. And the game is pretty good at uh, portraying that. Now this setup here is not the setup in the game. I've just set it up that way to show you the historical situation. But in effect, General Johnson and Beauregard have got to smash into the Union Army and push it into the Tennessee before the arrival of the Army of the Ohio. So the Confederates are racing against time, and that's what makes Shiloh so interesting. They pretty well have to win it on April 6th, the first day, because the night of April 6th, uh, Buell's Army will cross here at Pittsburgh Landing, reinforce Grant, Grant will be able to counterattack, and this will give the Union the victory. So that's the essence of the battle. Let's take a closer look at the counters. Okay, the counter density in the game is very low. That's virtually the entire Confederate Army right there, some uh, 30 or less units. Uh, they're quite nice. I thought they did an improvement over the old quads. You can see the infantry has a little straight bar, and that's the combat number, the morale number, and the movement. And that's the formation it belongs to. Artillery, very similar information. Um, the attack value, the morale, and the movement. And there are a few leader counters. You get Beauregard and Johnson. Bragg's in here somewhere. And you get these little tent uh, units to represent the headquarters. Union Army is very similar. There's not a lot of units. I didn't count them exactly, but I think there's maybe 34 or so. 
So counter density is low and the units are brigade level. Of course you get Sherman and Grant is currently off board up at um, Crump's Landing. He took a steamboat to the battle and got there early in the morning. So um, it's very quad-like, brigade level, and it's a simple game. Your standard stuff we've all come to know and over the years, you know, your rigid zones of control. So, you know, enter a zone of control, you're locked in for combat. So it's very quad-like. But what makes this game kind of come alive is they put some new rules in it. And um, let's take a brief look at those. Okay, well, what makes this one different than the quad games? Well, for one thing, they use a differential system. And uh, it seems to work very well for this game. So, for example, let's say you've got here Russell's brigade attacking the uh, this brigade here. Attack factor is 4, defense factor is 4. So you go to the 0 plus 1 table. And it has all the results we'd expect from a quad or simple game. The AR results, the exchange results, and uh, defender retreat results. Ammo results uh, would cause a artillery unit to flip and um, it would be low on ammo and you can get route results things like that so no real surprises there but some nice differences it's uh, one step above the quads I would say but they've got one rule here that I think is really neat I really like it let's take a look at that it's what they call the choice of tactics rule and that's really cool you can pick as the attacker kind of the skirmish option the press forward option, the charge option, disengage, or last stand if you're the defender. So by picking one of these options, you have to read the rule, uh, it'll cause a combat uh, change. For example, let's say you pick the, we'll take a simple one, the press forward. Attacking infantry only. Add two to the friendly attacking combat factor. If the defender does not rout the attacker loses one step in addition to any other result from the CRT. So you can press forward your attack and if you rope the guy, fine. If you don't, well, you can take more losses. And let's look at the opposite choice for the defender. Let's say he picks last stand. Defending infantry and or artillery add three to the defending combat factor. If the attacker does not retreat, the defender loses one step in addition to any other result from the CRT. And the uh, charge, skirmish, disengage all have different um, combat effects, which I thought was kind of neat. So a nice other layer added to the game, as we would expect on this scale and being Civil War, artillery can bombard at, uh, uh, at range, so um, that's, I think, the, yeah, the old quads had that too, so um, artillery bombardment is also in there. Another thing I like was the disruption result. When a unit is disrupted, you mark it so. I'll say that this unit is disrupted. It goes back three squares and to become undisrupted, it has to stand still, not be in a zone of control, roll a die, and has to get its morale factor or less, in other words, to rally. So in this case, the morale factor is two. You'd have to roll a one or two to rally. So a disrupted result can be um, kind of... Um, very damaging to a unit. The quads didn't have that. If you remember the quad games, you either went back one or two and the attacker could advance and the whole idea was these locking zones control which made these slow, slow advances. But in this game, a unit can actually be thrown way back and it'll have time uh, trouble rallying. And just like any other uh, standard war game, the attacker can always advance into the hex. So. I'd call this whole system more or less the quad game um, improved, the new and improved system of quads. I think they have other games in the series, but I haven't researched as to which ones they've done. Um, have they done a Chancellorsville or a Gettysburg game? I don't know how many are in this series, but if you think a uh, new and improved quad game, you won't be far from wrong about the system in general. Not much more to say about the game, really. 
Like I said, it's a simple game, certainly introductory. Uh, the standard musket and saber standard rules are eight pages long. You'll have no trouble with them. They seem to be well written. You get a little uh, folio of what, uh, two pages or so? Three pages with the exclusive rules for Shiloh. So, um, would I recommend the game? Sure, as a nice introductory game on the Civil War, it's just fine. It's not going to teach you a lot about Civil War tactics. I mean, this generic system could be used for all kinds of different periods, but it suits the Civil War fairly well, and uh, I, I think uh, the game can be played in about two hours or less. So um, that's Shiloh, Grant Surprise from Decision Games, published in 2010. Thank you for watching.